have roll call. Mr. Schrader. Here. Mrs. Schatzinger. Here. Mr. Hansen. Mr. Gallops. Here. Mr. Morrison. Mrs. Kane. Here. Mr. Wirch. Here. Mr. Split. Here. We have a quorum. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I am Reverend Jeffrey Dodson from First Congregational Church here in Ripon. Please be with me in the spirit of prayer. Big-hearted God, you are the one who counsels us when we are in times of trouble. Give to us your guidance and wisdom and bless our work for all the days we live and abide in your creation. We trust in you, for you are our strength and our hope. We give you thanks this day for the leadership of this community, for those with big hearts who listen with compassion, for those who give with humility, for those who speak with kindness and mercy. We ask your blessing upon our leaders and their families. I pray tonight for the Ripon community, businesses and schools, athletes, students, parents, children, the elderly and their caretakers, the poor and the jobless. I ask your blessing, O oh God, on our heroes, the givers and the volunteers, our healthcare workers, our grocery store clerks, our teachers, and our first responders. Help us to continue being a community that gives as mightily as we receive. We ask your blessing upon our people and our collective resources that through the work of this council, justice and mercy will be done. Give to our leaders your wisdom and counsel. Let us not forget your call to love one another as you have loved us. I pray this with my whole heart and in your holy and merciful name and in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I get an approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approval is, or agenda is approved. Are there any public comments? No public comments. Moving on to action items. I have one, Your Honor. Um, one of the uh, constituents reached out to me today um, expressing an interest in donating facial masks. Um, Jeff Roby from Fusion Heating and Cooling. So if anybody in the public, um, he's looking at possibly donating and building them and making them. So reach out to him directly and uh, he can help coordinate for an activity. He's looking at 50 or more masks of, uh, for a donation for if anybody's looking for it. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> moving on to action items. Item number one is the residential anti-displacement and relocation plan. Uh, this is required for participation in the CDBG program. Uh, the attachment, uh, RAD, RAP outlines the steps the city will take to minimize displacement of persons from homes if the project is funded by a CDBG. We do not anticipate any displacement as a result of the Vermont Parkway Terrace project. However, the city still is required to have this plan in place. Staff, staff recommends approval. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. <clears throat> um, we have Dave on the line for some more information on this item. Dave? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. And good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, this is a requirement under the CDG program. You have to have this program in place in order to be eligible for CDBG funds. Um, we've listed some steps in there to minimize the displacement, as Mayor said. Um, and uh, again, this would only be active <laughs> um, this would only be active if, uh, if you were uh, using CDE funds or if your project required displacement, but we don't anticipate any in the Vermont Parkway Terrace project. So. 
Very good. Happy to answer any other questions you have. Is there any questions from the council? Does this continue on afterwards? Is this something? Yes, yeah, this will be in this will be in place uh, for all future. Again, only if uh, TPPs funds are being used for projects. Um, so it will be uh, for any future TPP projects. This plan will be in place. So um, if you're awarded this year, uh, it would be considered under this project. According to the paperwork we received, it looked we have uh, sort of suggestions, and it, there are checks only under certain suggestions. So uh, my assumption would be, those are the only ones that we're agreeing to. Is that correct? That would be correct. Those are just a list of options that the city would have, and I can check those basically that are um, a lot of communities when they adopt the plan, they adopt it. So we didn't include any other ones that you. My follow-up discussion would be: I'd like to know why why not select them, and perhaps there could be costs involved. Uh, but I'm not sure I, I have enough information to make that decision as to know what the resources would go into if we were to check more of them. Yeah, I guess um, I you know most communities would stay away from the code enforcement because uh, there's kind of a I don't know. Additional costs with code enforcement, uh, but that's certainly up to the city to decide which ones that they want. Um, uh, adopt tax assessment policies such as deferred tax payments is another one that we did not check. Um, I don't know if we want to get into that again. It's up to the city to do that uh, if they want to um, defer tax payments uh, or tax. I think the answer to the question is that the project that we're looking at here is doesn't involve any of this displacement activity. If it did, I think you could look at these individually and say, let's include those as well. Um, we haven't been involved in a, a program that would require moving people out of their homes. Um, so my thought process is the minimum on this is better and trying to, to grab things that we really don't need on this project. Next project, if we have that, we, we go after them or look at them in totality. Well, Can this be amended uh, in the event that we would have a, a, another project in the future? Absolutely. <clears throat> that would, may require some of the boxes that aren't checked uh, that are germane to this particular project. We yes. can do that, correct? I can see no problem with that. Thank you. Again, just to reiterate, I think this is here before us just so we <laughs> check boxes that have to be checked and I would be concerned about reaching beyond the minimum that have been checked this evening. That would be my opinion. Because I'm new, I wanna make sure to ask, so if uh, another uh, opportunity to review this should come up, is it in the notes and will we automatically get presented with another chance to just review it or is that something that we individually have to bring forward if, if another situation like this were to happen? I think it's safe to say that if it were to come back before you, you would get this 
and say we now want to look at including other items off this list because this project may involve those type of activities. Again, I think it's more a check the box for this evening, um, and we need to obviously have it in place in order to get this. Are there any other questions on this item? Hearing no more discussion, I will put this one to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That item passes. Item number two, um, Fair Housing Ordinance and Resolution Adopting the Ordinance. Uh, this ordinance is required for the CDBG TF grant for the Vermont Parkway Terrace project. And staff recommends approval of this one. Dave, do you have any discussion on this item? Or actually, yes, I, think uh, I do have a little bit of discussion on it. Um, the city currently does have a um, ordinance that is required for the housing However, Just a piece of and just a piece of uh, housekeeping. We should probably get a motion of second on this before continuing discussion. <laughs> my my apology. Second. Uh, motion first. Oh, sorry. I'll make a motion. We. <laughs> All right. David moves. Second. And Paige seconds. Are there any questions or discussion on this item? Discussion? All right, uh, we'll take a vote on this one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. <laughs> Item number three, excessive use of force policy. This policy is also a requirement of the participation in the CDBG program. This policy in indicates that the city will not prohibit the entering or exiting of persons attending a lawful nonviolent civil rights demonstration. Staff recommends approval of this item as well. Is there a motion for this item? Make a motion we approve. Second. Moved and seconded. And any discussion? We'll start with Dave. Do you have anything on this one? Just for the record, the clarification that we added, Dave, was the word lawful. Um, obviously, we're a little bit unclear as to <laughs> circumstances that might invoke this. However, uh, clearly, if someone were to engage even in a nonviolent demonstration that would cause um, a disturbance in a private area or even a public area, um, the question would be, what measures could we take? And obviously the police department has excessive force rules and policies 
So the excessive force isn't so much my concern. It was the idea that we might have to move forward and um, prevent people from exiting or entering the uh, area if it is an unlawful demonstration. So we added the word lawful. which is, I'm sure, what was intended, but it makes it clear. So, from my understanding, it sounds like we already had this in place, and now we're adding lawful, so we're saying we're making it more narrow. So, before any, any civil right demonstration, whether it was lawful or not, was prevented against excessive force, and now, now we, we're- We didn't but, have. What he was referring to is we already have excessive force regulations or policies. This is being very specific, again, to check the boxes for this grant, and the draft did not have the word lawful in it, okay? So I'm sure that's what was intended by the draft, but I just wanted to make it absolutely clear. Obviously, if somebody's engaging in unlawful, notwithstanding they're calling it nonviolent, but it's not lawful, we're gonna do what we have to do. Now, we're not gonna use excessive force, but we may have to do something with exits and entrances. So I just wanted to make that clear. So the word lawful was added to the draft that was provided to us by Dave. So it isn't just adding the word lawful to our current policy. Let, let help me. We don't have an existing resolution on file, Jolene. We're we're not amending one. We're actually forming Creating a one. new resolution. Yeah. Yep. Because of the CDBG funding, they are very specific that there has to be language out there for civil rights, um, equal across the board. So we are doing this resolution to check a box so that we can make sure we have everything aligned for the CDBG funds. Um, that nothing can ever come back and say the city of Ripon didn't have these policies in place. Now we're not going to allow you to have those funds. And we're splitting hairs a little bit with the word lawful, but I feel much more comfortable if somebody engaged even into a nonviolent situation <coughs> where they're up against doors and they're not moving, we may have to come in, move them away from the door, fire hazard or bomb threat or, I mean, come with almost anything. If we had to do that in that situation, we're going to do it under the guise that we're protecting people that are engaged in this activity as well as moving forward with protecting innocent citizens. So that's the concept. And the chief already has excessive force policies, I think is what Dave was referring to, so. Done? Yeah. Um, to make it lawful, do we have like a permit process or doesn't that matter? No, that would not necessarily matter. It depends where they're gathering. Um, you know, there's, again, spelled out by the federal government, essentially, there's case law that says what are lawful assemblies. And that's the concept of lawful, as opposed to somebody just saying, we're getting together and we're blocking the doors to City Hall and we're sitting out in the lobby. Um, without any kind of lawful assembly being taking place. We're just doing it because we're tired of people coming in and out of City Hall or whatever. So there are issues that could occur that would be unlawful. Any further discussion? Hearing no more discussion, we'll put this to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Item number four. Thanks, Dave. Why don't you go now? <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. The following business has applied for a or applied in the city of Ripon for a class A intoxicating liquor license for the remainder of the 2019-2020 licensing period. Uh, business is Condon Oil. Trade name is the Ripon BP at 204 East Fond du Lac Street, 
in Ripon, Wisconsin. Um, owner is Craig Bauman at 434 Stonehenge Court, also Ripon, Wisconsin. Uh, the city has one Class A license available. Uh, Ripon BP currently holds a Class A fermented malt beverage and Class A cider only license. Is there a motion on this item? Al? Question. If this is granted, that puts us out of liquor licenses or we have one remaining? We have one potential coming back, correct, Ed? That would be, yeah, one business that's looking to surrender shortly. So we'll have one back in the coffer. We believe very shortly, Here's but you're that. right. This one would put us at our limit. Not available. Not available after this one, with the understanding that we have one business that will be surrendering shortly. Thank you. <clears throat> I get the difference. I'm not intoxicating liquor license versus the other fermented malt. What what is the difference. I'll, I'll let Ann, she's the, we, we refer to that, <laughs> our code is the Bible, so we'll let Ann take this. She is constantly reviewing these issues. The word class with parentheses around the letter A or B or C, um, A, B, our fermented malt beverage, like your beers, your, um, to use a brand, Mike's Hard Lemonade. Those are fermented malt beverages. Okay. The word class with the letter totally in quotes, that means intoxicating liquors. That's like your brandies, your whiskeys, your uh, wine is an intoxicating liquor. So that would be class with a C. Uh, wine is a C. The A's mean purchase for takeout, like um, your convenience stores, uh, right. Webster's, um, the gas stations. Um, B, basically, in your mind, bar. Yep. Um, so that's the difference between the, okay. the different classes. Thank you, Ann. Move to approve the application. Back a second. Al moved and James seconded. Further discussion? So if a new business comes to town and we do not have another uh, license, what what happens then? Do we have any other options other than denying them? Anne's coming back <laughs> to answer It depends that. what kind of business, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Anne will explain that. And if I can add to that question, how many does Rippon how many is Ripon allotted to begin with? The class Class A intoxicating liquor, the council actually put a limit on the number of licenses they wanted available to um, approve. So council at any time can change that ordinance. Um, and it's one per 700 and fraction thereof in population. So technically we can have 11.17 issued um if we were at, at like 11.6 i'd say we were 12. but um we're not quite to the half mark and that's based on our population and so that hasn't changed at all really since i started here um the class b intoxicating liquor that's set by state statute and uh december uh first 31st 1997 we had to fill out a form, how many licenses we ha already had issued, what our population was, and um, we were already maxed out at 16. Um, the state statute changed. It used to be fraction thereof, but now it's per thousand population, when, and you get an extra one. If Ripon would go up to 8,000 in population, we would get another Class B license, 
and that would be a reserved license. And I don't know if any of you um, have heard where municipalities were collecting like $10,000 for the, a license plus the license fee. Um, that $10,000 would be a one time only that whoever that establishment that was awarded that reserve license would have to pay. Um, but that license would always be a reserve license. So if, um, let's say one of the establishments that have been around for a long time would surrender their license, that would not become a reserve license. So. <laughs> so right now we have, no, we have no is, class P available at all? Um, we're currently at 12, we have four available. That's what I thought, I thought we did have class P available. Yep, we have four currently available. And you're telling the council that the A that we're talking about this evening, the council could Change. expand that. Yep. There's no state limit on? Not class on A. class A, just class B. Council set it at 11. Council set it. Mm -hmm. So to, just to further clarify, a class A would be um, somebody, uh, an establishment being able to, to sell bottles of liquor as opposed to using up this class A license would not affect somebody wanting to open a bar and get a license, correct? No, okay. totally different. Okay. Yep. And we have four bar Four okay. class Bs, yep, four bar yeah, ones. That, was, th that really is the high, hot ticket. And yep. Yep. Ann was saying we'd have to get a little bigger to get a reserve. Okay. Thank you, Thank Ann. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Can be very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that was also a plug to have everyone a reminder to fill out their census. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a motion on this. Did we get a second? Okay. Oh, that's right. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I'll put it to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Next item is update on the COVID-19 employment policy. Um, staff has no recommendations at this time. Is there are any discussion on this? If not, it will come back at the next meeting. Al? Lori, what, the, 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 um, the policy doesn't talk about in-state travel, travel to hot spots in the state. That, that may be something we want to look at. Can we look at this again? We can look at that, sure. It says CDC um, information and those type of things. Talks about out-of-state travel, but we may want to look at in-state travel in two areas that are designated as hot spots okay. um, within the state. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Good one. I believe we currently have three hot spots in the state. <coughs> Four? Four? They just joined the list. <laughs> <laughs> we did. There's no more discussion on this. Oh, I just have do have one quick, um, and I don't know that it matters with the office closures on section 10, um, with the library being closed to the public. I know it's still closed, but does that have to be updated because there's curbside pickup allowed or no? I know they're working on it. I don't know if they've started it yet, but that is a good point. We can okay. I'll confirm when that is effective and we can update okay. that too. Thank you. They started the curbside uh, two, Monday or Tuesday of this week. Okay, great. Yeah, I had to wait until that first safer at home term was over. I think right. so yesterday. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's on the agenda for the library board tomorrow. So. Any other questions or discussion? And we'll revisit that at the next meeting. Moving on to project updates and staff reports.
I did want to remind everyone that Board of Review is scheduled for Monday, June 1st at 4 p.m. And we are required to meet for a minimum of two hours. And the Board of Review members, just for the newer members, um, that's Council Member Schrader, Orch, Hansen, and Kane. So, um, so please mark your calendars for June 1st, 4 to 6. And then I also have our April anniversaries. We have Randall Bone from the Public Works Department, one year. Shane Quackle from Public Works, also one year. Travis Borkenhagen in the Police Department, two years. Jesse Tipton, Police Department, four years. Linda DeCramer at the library, 26 years. And Officer Trevor Hankey, 29 years. that, Lori, do we have hours set for our um, open book yet? I do believe um, <laughs> it's being handled a little differently this year because of I wanted, that's the COVID, COVID, yes. sorry, pandemic. So they can schedule an appointment online or? Yep. It's being handled virtually, um, either phone call, Zoom, um, email, um, the notices went out last Friday um, to all the property owners that had assessment changes. We do have our 2020 assessment roll for real estate and personal property on our website. It's on our assessor's website, and it's also here physically if someone physically wants to come and look at the book. Um, all the appointments are through our assessor. So it will not be here, it's in the council chambers as normal because of COVID-19. And the notice did go in last Thursday's paper on how it was gonna be handled. And that notice is also on our um, website and also posted outside. Thanks, Anne. <clears throat> Mike, do you have anything? No. Chief, you? No. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else for you, Lori? No. Oh, All it. right. And uh, moving on to an appointment to the Plan Commission. Um, I am recommending Doug Iverson for the Plan Commission. Move to approve Doug Iverson for Plan Commission. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? He is approved. Um, have one uh, communication, just a reminder to all council members. Uh, if you're unable to attend a council meeting, please inform a city administrator ahead of time just so we can make sure that we have a quorum. Um, I have. Are there any recommended agenda items for future meetings? I was thinking with the four new members and the new mayor that maybe in a month or so we should go through the health care benefits that the city offers the employees. It seemed to me always we get to the end of the year with the budget coming up and then it's just thrown at everybody. And this year we have four new members that will be voting on it. So if we could, I'd like to go through it and what the cost is to the city and the benefits that they get. All right. Anything else? Uh, I know I talked to you last time and you said to be sure to announce this. So I don't know if this is the place to do it as far as perhaps future agenda items, but considering we are under technically a state of emergency, correct? I do think it is appropriate to address important uh, community information. And so just to, again, you said, I know many people here have been a part of this, but there is a website, uh, ripincovid19.org. And this is for if people uh, from the community either want to help or need help 
relate it to the current pandemic. And so, um, and a reminder that if people have cloth masks, that right now at Ripon Community Church, as well as Our Savior's UCC, are two drop-off locations. And of course, uh, our great local business, Grant Peck and Ship, is a drop-off location for anyone that has uh, uh, sort of manufactured PPE, so N95 uh, type things. Um, I, I, I do, I, I don't want this to go into a long talk, so if it was agenda item, I, I fear that it could go long. However, I think if there are things good for the community to hear, this is one of the few places that gets out to all of community uh, meetings. And so I think it, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm making a case that to add relevant, uh, an agenda item relevant to information that's good for the community under the crisis. Okay. Anyone else? All right, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>